y'all welcome back to my channel i'm so happy that you decided to tune in to day two of my series about african wax prints and fall fashion and last video was a little introduction into what are wax prints why are they called wax prints this one is going to be showing you examples of different wax prints besides my shirt this is a floral and um telling you maybe some of the names that you may not be familiar with so that you can know the different um creative um styles of african wax print fabrics beyond what you might traditionally see or what might be marketed as traditional african print fabrics so last time i hi my name is nicole i'm a natural hair content creator but i'm also an experienced seamstress of 20 plus years and for the last nine or so years i have been specializing in african wax print fabrics as i've made hundreds of garments and items and sold many of them in my etsy shop adorned by nicole.etsy.com you can go check it out and so i love sewing i love making clothes the way i want them to be i'm tall um and i have um a curvy shape meaning that um my bust waist and hip measurements have never just been one size even when i get patterns um that i could be three different sizes in a pattern so that's what started me to besides seeing my mom and both my grandmothers and hearing stories about them sewing i was mo most interested in learning to sew so i can make clothes that fit my tall frame and fit my measurements that aren't this, always the standard that is sold in stores. So that's a little bit about me and how I started sewing. And when I took my first sewing class, um, Miss Oopsie Bailey was my uh, was the tailoring teacher. The first thing you learn before she lets you even like do anything with the machine or whatever is you have to sit there and learn like the basic stitches, the basics about fabrics and this and that. So that's why this series is starting off with you're like you might be like oh basics i want to get into the good stuff but these foundational things are important to help you do better once you get to the good stuff actually making things actually working with these fabrics and actually incorporating them into your wardrobe so yesterday was an introduction to wax prints what's the origin um you know where they come from and one more thing this is a series 30 days it won't be 30 videos so over the course of 30 days, though, I will be releasing videos almost every day in this series, and each is building on the other to be able to explore the beauty and versatility of African wax prints, okay? So then tomorrow, I'm giving you just like an overview for this week's videos, which I should have done in the first video, but this is my first series. This is my first time doing a long YouTube series, talking to you all in this format. So I appreciate you for bearing with me as we learn together and improve together. So tomorrow I will be doing a beginner's guide to working with wax print fabrics if you choose to delve into sewing, whether you're a beginner, a little bit more advanced. And so we'll be talking about rulers. We'll be talking about um, things you use to mark the fabric. So, you know, there's like a bunch of different types of rulers, but I'll just show you the main ones that I use on the next video. And then like things like interfacings and stuff like that. So that'll be in the next video for this week. And then I'll be talking about essential. Sorry, y'all. I jumped ahead. Then another day I will be talking about like what widths the fabrics usually come in and give you like tips on ordering them and also how to remove the sticker and then some care for wax print fabrics and African African wax print fabrics and laces I should say because I do have some laces up in here and then final video basic stitches to use when working with African cotton wax print and lace fabrics so that will be this first you know segment for this series so let's get into it I have separated my fabrics into three main categories so I'm gonna do florals then I'm gonna do geometric then I'm gonna do traditional and I didn't grab my traditional hold on let me see if I can so of course I can't put my hands on it I have I see one right here but the one I was looking for, I can't put my hands on it. So I'm just gonna find a photo of a finished item in it. Oh, here it is. I found it. This one. <laughs> so if you 
know you know if you're a fabric person it's like you always like know where your fabric is amidst the chaos and so I knew, I knew that fabric was around here somewhere and it was it was right in my face but so let's start with the traditional prints that you may be familiar with so that this is an example of a kente print and if you're deep into kente prints like all these colors mean different things all right So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Kente print. Then I'm going to show you the Angelina print, which you might see me wearing a lot of times. I have this caftan I made. It's like my around the house caftan that I love. And I've worn it in a lot of videos, so you've probably seen it. But this is the Angelina print, and it usually comes in big panels like these. These panels are like two yards by like 45, 46 inches. I'm trying to get you to see like a full panel. So they come like this. You see all that? So these are the big panels that I've used like when I've made the, a gown that I will probably insert here. Um, for a prom dress. For someone and I also used it to make this other couture type dress a different style that was like a high low circle skirt and so I will put those here as examples so you can see how you can use this to do formal like a ball gown versus the informal way I wear or casual way I wear it when I just wear my caftan all right, so those are the two traditional Angelina print. You also may hear it called Daishiki print, but those are the two main traditional ones that I like to use. And then one more that you may see common, that's like when people see it, they easily recognize it as African print. But I've also known, had friends who I've met and if they've actually been to West Africa and um, have seen it, they can recognize it and look at that and go, is that West African print? And I'm like, yes it is, you got a great eye, got a great eye. So this is the circle or record print that you see often as well. And this was actually a dress that was worn on the runway for when I did New Orleans Fashion Week pre-COVID time but yeah this circle print I've also made pillow shams out of this I made for a commission for a client a bed um skirt like an accent bed skirt so really from fashion clothing to home decor these fabrics are great if you want it all over or if you just want accent pops of color so that's the circle record print I should put her here there you go and then the next one i have on my list is laces so let me grab my laces and so this is spelled this one when you see them they'll be spelled g u i p e r e laces you might see that it's call it gooey pier g u pier guapur but the, <laughs> the actually pr correct pronunciation i think is g pure laces so that's these this one is sheer but they usually have a nice detailed edge on the bottom that is finished like a finished embroidered edge you see that isn't that beautiful so this could be used you know for a fancy sarong this could be used for a full dress with an underlay fabric that's a contrasting color or the same color this can be made into a full you know mermaid style wedding style gown like we got options so beautiful and I actually use this for, maybe I'll put it in here, um, the bodice on a dress I did for my niece. And then I did the overlay, the underlay part in a gold satin.
for a connection. So that's that type of lace. And then this lace is a little more or opaque, but it's still sheer, as you can see. Like, you can see my hand through it very easily. And this is another style of African lace. I've actually already used it for something. That This was also used for a fashion show. And so you see how it has that nice finished edge on there. So this is another example of African lace. And same, I would probably use it. I would cut it in a way, as you can see this cut, so this could be the bottom of a skirt because that would be really pretty. Just to give you some ideas. And then the modern, the more modern print that you can't just look at it without the trained eye of most people and go, oh, is that African print? Because it's not the ones you're used to seeing. So that would be this one. Like I said, the floral. I would call this a floral, but it also has straight lines, so floral and geometric. But these are just some examples, not a lot of fabric, y'all, of floral print. So I would call this more of an applique floral print because it's just <clears throat> one big flower design. And even though it repeats, you know, across the fabric, it's not like the other ones, you know, with the way it repeats. It's just like this big old applique design. And I love it. And I'm gonna think, I'm gonna look through my photos that I have and hopefully when I edit this video, then I can show you examples of how I've used each of these fabrics and what I have made with them. So that's an example of a floral. I will call this a floral and it's good because this is fall colors, right? It's leaf and it's fall. So if you want to be just like right on the nose with a fall African print, this is one is perfect. Black with the uh, rust leaves, but I will call it a floral too because it's in a plant family. This is a floral, has flowers and leaves on it, but this one also has like a little shimmer in it like a glitter shimmer so that makes it extra special and I've used this one to make a dress this one I love it because it has all of the colors of a rainbow and it's like in a painting style it's like it has the print but the color is like it's painted on but it still leaves the negative space and the black and white so it's like all the colors and neutrals black and white too so it's literally like all the colors so it's like a true rainbow print to me so dress this I would count as a floral because this is kind of flowery here and then some of the design is like leaves this is an easy floral right flowers and leaves And then, of course, this is the top I'm wearing that I made. And I'm going to list this top in my Etsy shop. I really like how it turned out. Um, I put the elastic here so it can be fitted. If I were shorter, I wish it were a little longer for me personally because I'm 5 foot 10 ish, 5 foot 10 and a half. And so if I were a little shorter, it would come down a little lower because I would like it to be perfect to like tuck into a pencil skirt or even to easily tuck into these pants personally how I like to style it but it's also cute like this and I did put a black undershirt on it for modesty me personally and this will be really cute for fall for a date night we're gonna come back to that when we get to like fall styling and stuff and these pants if you're wondering are from Fashion Nova and they are tall girl friendly but yeah so those are my examples of florals like I'm saying not an exhaustive list but it's a start. Let me move this ruler over here. And so those traditional those florals. And then these are examples of what I would call more geometric fabrics. This one is the beautiful list. I love when fabrics have like all the colors because then you have so much variety. Like you could wear this with a rust orange top. You could wear it with a mustard yellow top, a light blue top, a royal blue, green. You could wear it with all black, depending on what you make out of it which later on I'm gonna show you how to do some outerwear with this. And then you could just wear like all black underneath it. And then this could be your accent piece. Whether it's a head wrap, 
or a scarf, etc. And this is more of what you would think of with a tribal print. And I also like the fall colors of it. I have made a skirt out of it. And then this, I think I plan to make a tote. I had already cut this out to make a tote bag. So you got options with these prints. Cotton, still a cotton. This is what I would call geometric prints. And we'll talk about later about pattern placement and how you can place your pattern to, you're not like married to just cause this goes this way, that that's the way your garment has to be. So we'll talk about more about that in one of the later videos. And then this is an example of a geometric print. It's still like similar to a tribal print, but it's bigger than the other one, right? And different color palette. See? Yeah. So those are my examples of different wax prints. Comment below and let me know which category is your favorite, which print was your favorite, and I will put links to as many of the items that I talk about in the description box if i don't put a link to something like if you're like oh i love those pants i'll send you the link it's fine it might be an affiliate link you know where i might be able to earn a commission just putting that out there but yeah if i attach links some of them may be affiliate links some of them may not be but i'm happy to share and so the next video i will be talking about the beginner's guide to working with african print fabrics tips for handling them washing them cutting them um, purchasing them um, how to remove the sticker that usually comes on it sticker yeah where it, you know where to find the sticker usually and some tips for removing it and then how to care for cotton wax prints will be in the next video so I'll see you then thank you so much for watching I look forward to reading your comments have a great day